Welcome back. Thank you for clicking on today's video. Today we are going to be making numeric summaries and graphical displays for one categorical variable. So I am in the R studio and I already have some files uploaded. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to add a chunk of code and I'm going to tell it that I want it to be R. And I first am going to read in the data. And to do that, I am going to assign it uh, with this left-handed arrow. You can also use an equal sign. And I'm gonna say read.csv because that's the file type CSV. So that's the name of my file. And then I'm gonna add a comma and I'm gonna say header equals true. And essentially that's telling R that the first row or the head of the data is the variable names and so it'll read it as such. And then as best practice, I'm going to tell it that it's separated by a comma. Now I've highlighted that row and to be able to run the row without going up here to the run option where I have different um, availabilities if I wanted to run specific chunks, I am going to just run this one line and to do that I push control and enter and you can see it ran that line. So now one thing that when you've just read in data can be helpful is to run this names code and this gives the variable names in the data. So that's helpful because when we do some of these uh, programs, you have to make sure that your variable name matches both spelling and capitalization. So that's the first part. We need the data. Next, we need the library that we're going to use. So I'm going to remind you all of the way that you would upload a library. So I'm going to say install packages. And we're using the mosaic package. Uh, but I'm not going to run this because I already have this library uploaded into this particular project. So you can see that when I start typing mosaic, it knows that it's there. And so that means that it's installed. And so I'm just gonna run that to attach this library to this project. So now that we've installed our packages and read in the data, we can get to uh, numeric. So I think it's a good idea to practice labeling things because when you write code and then you return to it like a month, a year, two years later, it sometimes is hard to remember what everything did. And it is valuable to have notes written that are specific to you so you know how uh, things are working and what it needs if you need to change it. So we're gonna do numeric summaries and to do that, we're gonna use this function called tally and then a tilde, and this is for categorical data. And so I need to have selected one of those categorical variables, which I know sex is in there. So we're gonna do sex, then we tell it what data set. So I'm gonna do GVSU, and then you can call for a specific format. We're going to do percent, and let's run that and see what happens. So you can see it's just telling you the percent of people that are in the female and percent that are in male. Uh, you can do margin equals true. And when you do that, you can see that it actually creates a total for you. But if you wanted to, you could call for the count and then it's gonna tell you the number of individuals in each group as well as the total sample size. So that's how you create a frequency table. Um, you would have to do that for each variable and there are ways to make a bigger table uh, and we'll, we'll practice that when we do projects. So then the next thing, and remember there weren't really very many numeric summaries for categorical data. We had uh, frequency, relative frequency, and percent. So we just did uh, frequency, which is the synonym for count and percent. And then the next thing we're gonna do is some um, graphical displays. So graphical displays. You know what, actually, before I do that, I'm gonna do um, count for frequency and percent for percent. 
So that's helpful to remember that. And then our graphical display is here. And let's just separate ourselves out. Create a little barrier there. Uh, GF is what the mosaic package is looking for to create a graphical display. And then we're going to do percents and then the tilde. And then you state the variable. So we'll just stick with sex and then the data. And we still have GBSU. So this is going to give me this bar graph. And you can see that the x-axis gives you the sex. And we actually looked at this bar graph when I compared um, when I compared uh, the pie chart and the bar graph. So this is how you create it. This does um, percents on the vertical axis. I'll just call it that. And then if I wanted to, I also could do it for the counts. And that's still GF. But this would be bar. And then we do the tilde. Oops. Uh, there it is, tilde, and then we're still doing sex, and then data equals GBSU. And then this time, you'll see that the vertical axis is the count of individuals. So um, I'm going to say that this gives a uh, frequency on the vertical axis. Okay, so that's how you create graphical displays. We can make this fancier. We can change the color. There's some labeling that you can do. And we'll practice um, getting better at this in uh, projects. But for right now, that's the code to create a bar graph and uh, some of your numeric summaries. And then if you remember too, when we were looking at um, a categorical data, we also created contingency tables. So this is still, and, and I'm going to label this actually. So um, two-way table, or also called the contingency table. So two-way table, done. And then this is the tally option again. And we're going to do tilde. And then we're going to start with the explanatory variable. So I'm going to have sex. And then I now I can't remember what other variables are in there. So let's do names and we're doing the GBSU. I'm just going to quick run this to remind myself what options I have. So I only can choose a categorical variable. So I know that age is quantitative, sleep is quantitative, uh, riding the bus is not, it's categorical. So I guess let's do that. Actually, let's do... Um, headphones. So do you use headphones while you're walking? Uh, and then we'll do the data and we will do margin equals true because if you remember up here that gave us the totals and so let's run that and you can see we created a contingency table and you see that there is a dot there that means that I have some missing values. I'm going to add this code that says use NA and I'm going to say equals no. And when I run that, you actually can see that that dot is not being removed, which means that R thinks that that's a legitimate observation. And so to get rid of that just right now, I'm going to do um, a cleanup and I'm going to say GBSU clean. And I'm going to say for the GBSU, so I'm assigning a new object, which is called GBSU clean, and I'm doing it to GBSU using GBSU data. And I'm going to say if the GBSU data has a headphones that um, is exactly, that's what the double equals is, um, a, a period, I'm going to say basically include only the ones that don't have a period. I'm gonna run this and that's created a new data set for me called GBSU Clean. And there are other ways to deal with this. I just am showing you right now one way to get rid of those observations um, because that is not an appropriate inclusion or missings aren't for a contingency table. And now you can see that contingency table and with the margins equals true, that's why we have the total row and the total column. And then 
this headphones is no, sometimes yes, and then sex is female, male. And you can adjust what's being shown. So here we have the counts being shown, uh, but you can do percentages. So for example, if I said format equals, and I did percent and have to make sure I have commas, and when I run that, it gives the percent. And you'll notice that this is actually a joint distribution. So it's the relative frequency and then they're multiplying by 100%. And I know that because it has 100% in the sample size. And so that means that each of these cells is going to be adding up to that total. So that's how you get that joint distribution and also how you get a contingency table. So the very last thing that we have is going to be a clustered bar graph. So I'm going to label that. I'm going to say clustered bar graph. Uh, make some separation for us. And then we're going to do GF. And that's percent. So remember that that GF is how we start the um, the, the all of the graphs for the mosaic package and then we do a tilde and this time we do the response variable so that it will show up on the uh, x-axis and I'm going to do the headphones and then I'm going to say the data and we're going to do that GBSU clean data because again I don't want those missings included and then I am going to fill by the explanatory variable. So fill by, and we said that sex was our explanatory variable, and I'm gonna do position equals uh, dodge, and then I am going to run that, and you can see that it creates a nice bar graph for males and females, and it's the percent in each group. And if we wanted to, we could compare it to the contingency table that we ran here. Well, you'll notice, so females that don't wear headphones is 17, sometimes is 17, and yes, is 24. So then when I run the uh, bar graph, you can see females is the red. So don't is about 17, sometimes is 17, and yes, is 24. So you can see that the bars of the clustered bar graph correspond to that joint distribution from the contingency table. So the height of those bars is related to um, those measurements from the contingency table. So those are the numeric summaries and graphical displays for categorical data. Uh, we will get fancier with this when we do projects, but for right now, I just wanted to show you the basic codes and what those different options mean. See you in future videos.